Tesla just made 1 million next-gen 4680 battery. Elon Musk, in classic Muskian manner, raised hopes and tempered expectations in one cryptic swoop on July 26th, in a rare insight into work on his company's supposed game-changing battery. Tesla has announced that its pilot factory in California has produced 1 million of its next-generation 4680 battery cells. Any mention of production difficulties at Tesla conjures up memories of the Model 3's rocky launch in 2017 and 2018, during which Musk slept at his office. Nonetheless, that game-changing car helped Tesla become the world leader in electric vehicles and one of the world's most valuable corporations. The bigger cylindrical 4680 cell, first revealed during Tesla's Battery Day event in September, comes with its own set of high ambitions and challenges. If Tesla can achieve vertically integrated battery manufacturing in-house and the cell works as expected, the 4680 might help Musk realize his vision of mass producing millions of electric vehicles each year across the world. Tesla is anticipated to begin delivery of the updated Model Y with its 4680 cell and structural battery pack later this year. So in today's video, we'll talk about Tesla's new 4680 battery cell. Everything you need to know. Tesla didn't hold back at the battery day, introducing a new tabless 4680 cell form factor, among many others. Do you want to learn more? So pay attention to the footage. Good day, everyone. Rewind with Elon Musk. To remain up to date on Tesla, SpaceX, Starlink, and everything else in the world of technology, subscribe to our channel, like this video, and click the notification bell button. At the battery day, Tesla didn't hold back, introducing a new tabless 4680 cell form factor, among other things. The new form factor eliminates tabs, improving the power-to-weight ratio, streamlines manufacturing, and reduces costs. To put it another way, bringing a potato gun to a french fry war is the new Tesla 4680 cell. Let's go over each of the benefits that the new form factor brings to the table. But what is the scale required for this and on what stakes Tesla put it to work? Tesla was happy to buy cells with its own chemistry from its suppliers, but there were problems on the horizon. Tesla wants to grow at a 40 to 50% annual rate, and in order to do so, it will require more and more batteries. Tesla's battery estimates revealed a discrepancy between its battery cell suppliers' production limits and Tesla's internal demand for its car and energy storage businesses. Tesla's teams have been hard at work purchasing and inventing new technical solutions to push additional advancements in the battery cell format to overcome this problem. Perhaps more importantly, Tesla rethought the entire process from start to finish by combining its expertise in battery cell manufacture with its world-leading manufacturing equipment expertise. But what should be the step change in cell manufacture, and how will it affect the industry? Tesla swiftly moved beyond simply developing and creating things to designing the machine that makes the machine as it sought higher economies in vehicle manufacturing. Manufacturing is difficult, but Tesla's dedication drove it to build products that were easier to make. This was initially seen with the Model 3, and work has continued with each subsequent version. When it came time to design the new battery, Tesla looked all the way back to the beginning. Musk's preoccupation with basic principles is seen in this. He strives to start every design, every conversation with the lowest common denominator, the most basic reality that connects our products to the materials that make them up. With the acquisition of battery and supercapacitor pioneers, Maxwell Technologies and Hybar Systems, Tesla established a new ground truths in the battery sector. Tesla acquired the production equipment expertise at Grumman Automation during the construction of its first Gigafactory in Sparks, Nevada. Groman swiftly became the lead developer for Tesla's Gigafactory 1's battery cell production lines, adding progressively complex production lines as the factory's cell production capacity grew. At Gigafactory 1, improving each of the primary components that make up a battery was beneficial and resulted in higher efficiency. But Tesla had a bigger goal – complete integration. Drew Baglino unpacked the vision now being fulfilled at Tesla during today's Battery Day event. We can actually accomplish that because we don't have any of these edge circumstances between one piece of equipment and another, because we have vertical integration with the machine design teams at Groman, Hybar, and others, Baglino said. We can design the entire machine as a single unit and eliminate all of these extra processes. Tesla's obsession with vertical integration stems from a goal to remove inefficiencies and improve the product's long-term viability. Tesla's vertical integration has resulted in a much-needed cost reduction, lowering the cost of Tesla's goods over time. 
The new 4680 Celsius tablet's architecture has a direct impact on enhancing manufacturability. The table's design not only eliminates the requirement for a tab, but it also eliminates the need for production lines to pause to add tabs. The new tablet cells bypass this stumbling block, allowing a manufacturing line to hum along, rolling up and spitting out gigantic 4680 cells with fewer manufacturing faults. Baglino stated, This is not just a concept or a rendering. At our pilot 10 gigawatt hour production facility just around the block, we're starting to ramp up manufacturing of these cells. Tesla's Roadrunner project produced a pilot line for the production of 4680 cells, and CEO Elon Musk believes there is a clear path to scaling up the pilot line operations to gigawatt hour and even terawatt hour scale. Getting to 10 gigawatt hour annualized production capability will take some time, Musk stated. In the following 12 months, the business plans to work out the bugs in the new production lines. It will be time to drive the scale at that point. In the long run, actual production plants will be on the order of 200 gigawatts or more. Tesla's main expertise is not the development of novel cell size, chemistry or vehicle configurations in the long run. Manufacturing, rather, is the key. Every automaker will eventually have long-range electric cars, Musk stated emphatically. Every corporation will eventually have autonomy. However, not every business will excel at manufacturing. Tesla will be head and shoulders above the competition in production. That is our objective. Tesla has started producing the 4680 cells at a pilot production facility in Vermont since the unveiling, as well as deploying the large-scale production at other facilities like as Gigafactory Texas and Gigafactory Berlin. While Tesla refers to it as a pilot factory, the manufacturer has stated that the facility will generate 10 gigawatt hours of battery cells, which is more than many other full-scale battery cell factories. Tesla's SVP of engineering, Drew Baglino, claimed last month that the pilot plant was making significant progress in ramping up production, but he didn't confirm the capacity. Tesla has now stated that the Kato Road factory manufactured its 1 millionth 4680 cell in January. It's not obvious from the phrasing, but it appears like Tesla has produced 1 million 4680 cells as of January. Unfortunately, this doesn't provide much information, as the present production rate is the most relevant parameter for determining how many vehicles Tesla can produce using the pilot plant's capacity. At 1,000 cells per car, 1 million cells will be enough to create around 1,000 Model Y vehicles at Gigafactory Texas. That isn't enough, but if Tesla can create 100,000 4680 cells per week, it will be enough to produce 100 Model Y vehicles per week, which is a solid start as 4680 cell production ramps up alongside Model Y production at the new factory. Baglino also stated last month that Tesla does not expect 4680 cells to represent a barrier in the Model Y production ramp at Gigafactory Texas and that the firm is making progress in installing greater-scale 4680 cell manufacturing at the new factory. Tesla's new pack, which includes adhesive bonding between cells and contemporary welding techniques, is expected to reduce steel utilization by 30 to 40 percent, according to Monroe. Power will be restored to terminals via stamped grid plates on the top. Monroe's team created a mock-up of the planned pack, complete with cut and painted wooden dowels to resemble the hefty new cell. In comparison to the 2170 variety, the pack ingested 960 bigger cells. Monroe predicts that Tesla could cram 130 kilowatt hours of additional cells into the same sized pack that currently stores only 72 kilowatt hours in the Model 3. But what if all this gets developed in the coming years? What if we see an advanced version of these kind of cells? Having said that, as we near the finish of this video, we'd like to thank you all for sticking with us. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button. Most importantly, if you want to be kept up to date on anything relating to Elon Musk and Tesla, you should subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon. Look forward to seeing you in the next one. Until then, peace.